Good day and good morning for, from uh, Sir Blasphemy here at Sir Blasphemy's Travels. So uh, I'm having a wonderful morning here sitting outside, uh, sitting with my cat Sadie. She's over there relaxing, so I'll be keeping an eye on her while I make this video. But uh, today I'm going to make you guys a video. Um, I got a lot of questions. I have people that will question me um, out at the fairs and they question me on YouTube as, as well if you search through some of the comments. And a lot of them want to know either what it's like to vend at Ren Fairs, you know, what you have to do, what you have to go through, you know, what to look out for, you know, and so on and so forth. And how do you get into them and, and so on and so forth. And, you know, if you just want to work, if you don't want to be a vendor and you just want to work there, what to expect, you know, what could you, you know, what's the pay like, um, what's the hours, what do you do, things like that. So. I decided to make this video. I think I'm going to go ahead and answer those questions for you. So the first thing I want to start off on is um, we'll, we'll answer the vendor portion first. Um, so I'll give you some some tips and some things to look out for. You know what you have to do to get into these Renaissance festivals. So the first thing um, that you need to to have the very first thing is an original product. Um, whether that be food or whether that be some kind of merchandise of some kind um, and you know and it varies you the first thing I would recommend doing is to go out to the Renaissance fairs go out to the one that's near you and and uh, take a look around you know go out there experience the day but study the shops see what's out there get an idea of what these fairs look for now some fairs are more liberal than the others meaning that they'll bring they'll let you bring in similar like items while some fairs will not let you know anything get too close they try to give which is a good thing they try to give um the the vendors a uh, you know kind of an exclusive right so that way you're not competing in the same kind of small area with three or four other shops that are selling similar or the same things so first thing you got to have is kind of a unique trade or a unique food or something of that nature um and the contracts are different too as well. So the first thing you're gonna do, go out to the fair, check it out, take a look around if you're wanting to be a vendor and look around and see you know, if your product is similar or, or different. They might even let you in if it's similar but not the same. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing you're gonna do after you've been out to a fair and looked around is you're going to go to that, uh, whatever fairs you wanna join, okay? You're going to go to their websites and you're going to um, um, download their application and you're going to fill out the application and what you're going to do is you're going to send pictures of your product um, tell a little bit about yourself answer their questions they're going to they're going to want to know you know what kind of a setup you're going to have are you going to buy a booth right off the bat do you have the money to buy a booth and then you might want to look for booths for sale things of that nature on their sites but um if you don't you're gonna to have to find yourself a tent um, or something that's Renaissance themed. You cannot go out there with, you know, the kind of the farmer's market style tent. You can't do it. Um, you're gonna to have to look for something that's Renaissance themed. I recommend going to LARPTents.com. That's L-A-R-P Tents.com. And um, I might go ahead and throw that up on the on the bottom of the screen here so you guys can write it down. And, and check it out and they have a variety of tents that are renaissance themed that you can get into renaissance fairs with that's the tent that i use until i can build okay so you're going to need those things and then once you fill out the application each fair kind of has their their um their what do you call it what they need you to have so signage a lot of fairs need you to have banners so you're going to need to make banners to hang that a renaissance theme, you know, again, each fair is a little bit different, so you have to check out what their, uh, you know, qualifications are for making a banner or something of that nature. Um, and then you'll have to get a banner made. Um, that's easy to find. There's a lot of people um, that you can look up that you can get renaissance uh, banners made, especially on Etsy, things like that. And, um, and you're probably going to have to have signage. They're going to require you to have a sign with your booth number so people can find you when they have the maps and stuff at the fairs. So that's the first thing. Then you're going to wait. What's going to happen is, is they're going to jury you in. Almost every single fair is a jury, which means that their board 
will vote you in or vote you out. And you just sit and wait. Now, if you get voted in, here's what you can expect. You're gonna wanna go, let's say you get voted in, your product's original, you get voted in. Whether it's, whether it's um, uh, chocolate, like I sell, food product, um, whatever food that may be, or, or merchandise of some kind. They're gonna send you a contract. Now the contracts vary too as well. If you're selling like merchandise at most fairs, you pay a standard fee. And that fee, you know, can range anywhere from, you know, $800 for an entire season to close to $2,500. And you play that, pay that flat fee. And that may or may not include like utilities if you need a refrigerator or if you need things of that nature. Um, so, you know, you're gonna, and that's if you're dealing with food, if, if you're gonna need sink, you know, things like that. You just, you just gotta look at their contract and you're gonna pay a flat fee up front or if you're doing food, sorry, I kind of walked over myself here, but if you're doing food product or something that people have to take home or um, have to drink or eat or whatever at the fair itself, um, you're gonna, they're gonna take a percentage. Um, so they'll offer you a percentage contract, which might be a little less or no fee up front other than maybe utilities and um, you're going to pay a percentage to the fair and those percentages can vary they're either 12 and a half percent 15 percent 20 percent 20 percent is the most i've seen um, and and that means that every single weekend when you make your sales you report to the office if you're on that particular contract where you're giving up a percentage you report your numbers to the office and you cut them a check each week uh, most fairs are each week and uh, you cut them a check and uh, sorry my cat's moving around <laughs> you cut them a check and you give them 12 10 whatever it is 15 20 percent of your sales that weekend and that goes on through every single weekend throughout the fair all right that's how you do that um, what to expect when you go out there as a vendor so the first thing you're gonna see is once you get to your spot um, if you're having a tent like me starting out, what I would recommend doing is, uh, you know, go out there and, and get to your spot about a, at minimum a week before fair opens, okay? And you're going to scout your spot, get your tent set up. I would recommend having somebody come with you. Those tents are really heavy and they're hard to put up. Fortunately, I kind of got familiar with it and got it and do it by myself, but it's not easy. It's really hard because they're really heavy and they're really dense, thick kind of tents. So you're gonna go there, you're gonna get it up. I recommend you're gonna need like a mat on the floor. Most fairs need a mat. Um, Texas Renaissance Festival doesn't require you to have a mat on the floor, um, but a lot of other fairs do. They You need to have some kind of flooring down. And um, so get your flooring down. Um, be prepared now with tents, be prepared for extreme weather in situations, heat and cold. So if you've got a product um, like I do, like chocolate, that's very, you know, sensitive to heat, you know, you need to make sure you have coolers. You need to make sure you have a way to keep it cool because those tents get hot. They get really hot and they get stuffy. It's like a sauna and those things. When it's cold out, if you got something that's cold sensitive, you need to either have like a portable heater or something inside the tent to make sure your product withstands the temperatures. Pardon me for a moment. I'm going to deal with the kitty cat. Hang on. Come on, Sadie. Here we go. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. So you're going to need those little things. I recommend bringing with you like brooms. You're going to want to have tables. You're going to want to have cleaning supplies. You're going to want to have a, um, some kind of POS system, a cash register drawer. Um, I always recommend a drawer, you know, depending on what you sell, a minimum, a minimum drawer of 250 bucks in your drawer but you're probably going to need more than that because even then sometimes i run out of change and things like that so lots of ones lots of fives in particular um lots of quarters and um yeah and, you, and you're going to want to of course set up your your um pos system with whatever the income tax or, i'm sorry the sales tax rates are per state whatever state you're dealing that with make sure you have that properly um make sure you inventory your your products um, and especially if you hire somebody, I got took 
by somebody that I hired one time. It was a lesson learned. Make sure you hire people that are trustworthy. Vet them as best as you can. Um, and even then, like I did, you might run into a bad egg. Um, be prepared for storms, things of that nature that blow your tent down. So always have a plan. If you're out there in a tent or even in a booth, always have a plan. Have somebody on hand that you can call that can help you reset up your tent. Um, if anything, move it. If, if, if a storm's bad, and so on and so forth. Be prepared for those things. Um, you're going to need insurance. I use a company called ACT, A-C-T Insurance. Um, and they'll give you insurance throughout the fair. All the fairs require you to have insurance. So those are all the things you're going to have to kind of supply to the fair that I know every fair needs. Uh, now there might be variables on what, you, what each fair requires you to have, things of that nature, or what you may need. Um, you'll have to check with that fair to uh, um, see if you get accepted. And so, um, yeah, and then um, once you're kind of out there, it's, it's a pretty good community as far as the vendors go. I mean, I haven't really ran into anybody who tries to undercut you. If anything, they'll buy from you all the time once they get to know you. And so that's always kind of a good thing. Whereas I've had retail stores in the past where the other retail store owners would try to copy some of your merchandise, put it in their stores and try to undercut you. And, 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 and it, you know, it's, it was kind of cutthroat. Whereas the fair, you can't do that. Um, other vendors can get thrown out for that. And so it's a really friendly environment. Plus it's kind of community based. And so it's really good. So, I mean, to, to kind of wrap it up in a nutshell for vendors, this is very, very vague. And I'll, and I'll maybe explain some other things too here that you'll need to bring to here in a second. You know, so the first thing, have an original product. Then whatever fair or fairs you want to deal with, send your pictures, photos, all the information you can, a little bit about yourself, you know, years in business, so on and so forth. Send that to the fairs. Some might require you to have an application fee. Some don't. Just depends. And that's whether you get accepted or not. And uh, so you'll send those things in. If they jury you in, you're going to need a tent. Get yourself a tent or if you're buying a booth, even better, do that. You'll need to do that. And then get your signage, get whatever uh, um, things that the fair needs for you to have that is must have for, uh, for that fair. Make sure you purchase those things. Those are banners. Those are signage. Um, you know, floor mats, um, you know, tables, whatever displays, things like that. Um, and then, uh, you know, be, be wary of weather, things of that nature. Um, what I also recommend is getting a wagon of some kind because some of these fairs, for instance, like the original Renaissance Pleasure Fair in California, that's the worst fair I've ever done. I had to walk miles, not miles, I won't say that, but, but a long way from the parking to my tent because they won't let you go in there um, at certain times. Whereas most other fairs, you can park relatively close without being seen by the public eye in a designated parking spot. Most fairs have that. The one in California does not. I don't know what other fairs may not have that that I haven't attended. But um, like Scarborough has designated parking. Um, Texas Renaissance Festival has designated parking. From what I gather, Sherwood Forest Fair has uh, designated parking. Arizona has designated parking. But, you know, you just got to be prepared, get you a wagon because you do not want to be hauling your stuff because some stuff you're going to take out each weekend. You don't want it to get damaged or you don't want it to get stolen, whatever the case may be, which thievery doesn't happen that often, but it happens from time to time. So, you know, you don't want to be carrying your money drawer and your POS and things that you need to take back. You don't want to leave money sitting in a drawer inside your tent over a weekend, right? And you need to haul stuff or maybe you got to bring product in bring product out something's working something's not so buy yourself a little wagon haul that in have plenty of food and drink if you are working it by yourself because you will not have time to eat hardly so you'll need to eat in between you know sales and things like that you will not have time to leave your tent and of course you don't want to so i rarely ever leave my tent and if i do I usually, as I get to know the people at the fair, they'll watch my tent for me and I'll go to the restroom. And that requires also, I highly recommend, inside your tent, buying one of those little uh, portable toilets. Because um, you got to pee, you know, quite often when you're drinking, when on a hot day. 
And so you're gonna need somewhere to go and you gotta go inside your tent. That's just the way it is. Um, you gotta go. So, you know, bring you a little enclosed, you know, like a blanket or something inside your tent that you can hang down a banner, anything. And you go behind that, use your, use your little kind of portable toilet and go back to work, you know? So that's kind of how that is. That's what to expect. And um, other than that, you know, get ready to make good money. I mean, it's a pretty good venture if you have the right product. I've known quite a few people that have failed doing, um, um, you know, Renaissance fairs. And uh, luckily I'm not one of them, but that's kind of it in a nutshell. That's kind of what to expect. So, you know, I hope that gives you a better idea as a vendor, um, what to expect. And uh, yeah, and give it a shot. I mean, if you have a unique product that you can, you think and feel that could go into a renaissance themed event then check with the fair and they'll tell you you know hey you know this might work you know and then send it in do your application you know make sure you have money you got to have your money for your supply up front depending on whatever it is you sell i recommend for me i need a minimum of five to ten thousand dollars before i even do a fair because i have to cover all of those expenses you make it back pretty quickly but you know, make sure you have that. If you're more elaborate and you have more expensive goods, you need to have, you know, 10, 15, $20,000 up front or at least access to that, whether that's in credit or whether that's in cash, whatever the case may be. So that's just kind of a, qu a quick rundown of what it's like to be a vendor. And you know, in the end, have fun. It's one of the funnest jobs on the planet. You don't even know you're working when you're out there. So yeah, you know, Run it up the flagpole. See who see who uh, salutes it. You know. Um, now for the part two of this. If you're going to be a worker at the fair, um, and, and that's just you know you're not going to be a vendor and you just want to work the fair. Here's what to. Oh, and I'll include this too with the vendors, camping and 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 where to stay. I'm sorry, that's really important. This will fall in line with workers and vendors both. Um, if you're a worker, I'm gonna settle the camping really quick since I'm piggybacking off being a vendor. You're gonna to wanna to know if your um, booth, if you can sleep in it for one, most of the time you can't. So you gotta find out what the camping issue is at each fair because you're gonna camp out. You're gonna to wanna to have a tent, you know, if since you're a worker and you're gonna find out, you know, what the fees are to camp and, um, you know, maybe if, if you've got um, a fair where you can be on site seven days a week and your booth owner will let you sleep in the booth, that's even better. That's fine as long as you're a clean person and, and, and uh, look after yourself. So camping is something that you need to be aware of. You need to bring as if you're camping, but you're going to be there two months. So unless you live nearby, if you're camping at fair, you bring all your camping supplies, buy yourself a little mini shower rig because sometimes you know, you can't always get into the showers. They have showers at some fairs and no showers at others. So I always recommend buying one of those little um, fill a bag up showers with warm water, you know, let it sit out in the sun for the day. And when you go to shower, you just turn that little nozzle and take your shower and get clean that way. Um, a lot of people do it. Most of fairs though, you can go ahead and shower. So you're gonna wanna have your shower supplies and things of that nature. So it's like camping for two months. So, you know, your modern kinda, you know, your, you know, your TV and all that stuff, you know, unless you're in a booth with electricity, you're not going to really have that unless you're piggybacking off some Wi-Fi at the fairgrounds. And most of the time, Wi-Fi at the fairgrounds is pretty choppy. So you're not going to have a lot of access to like your laptop, stuff like that. But for the most part, you, you will, but it just depends on the fair. And so be, ex be ready to camp, be ready for that long-term commitment, be ready to be out there. And you know what? It's a lot of fun because tons and tons of people do it, whether in RVs or whether in just plain old tents. And again, it's a community and everybody kind of helps each other out. So as a worker, expect that. As a vendor, make sure both, both worker and vendor here, make sure your fares, you can camp on the ground seven days a week, like TRF, for instance. You can only camp four days out of the week. Three days, you need to be off site. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna look for hotels. If you don't know anybody, you're gonna look for affordable hotels. Make a lot of call arounds for hotels. I find them everywhere. They're out there, they're not too expensive. You might not be staying at the Hilton or something like that, but you're gonna be staying at you know kind of questionable motels. But most of the time it's, it's peaceful, it's quiet, and uh, you know, 
you can get through and, and, and do what you need to do because the money's worth it. But um, um, as, as for a vendor, now what to expect as a worker, um, you're looking at pretty long weekends. You know, you really, you work um, two day weekends, three at, you know, there's always a weekend or two at most fairs where you have a third day that you work. And those days really start, you know, depending on who you're working for, you're required to be there eight, 9 a.m., maybe 10. And, uh, you know, you're gonna relieve um, the boss or other workers, if there's more than just you and the boss, um, you know, for bathroom breaks, lunch breaks. Um, you usually can go out and, and get lunch 30 minutes to an hour, again, depending, you know, on your boss. Um, you'll get, you know, the occasional cigarette break to walk away, have a smoke, whatever, or just to relax if you don't smoke. So you can expect that. Um, so your days on the weekends really are about, I'll say minimum a 12 hour day each weekend. So you're looking at, you know, my days are about 14 to 16, but you know, for the worker, it might be around 12 hours. So expect that because most fairs are open from, uh, you know, 10 to six minimum. And you gotta be there before and a little bit after to clean up and things like that. So depending on the booth you're working for. Um, Make sure you got your garb. Everybody must wear Renaissance themed garb. You have to have that. I recommend going to Etsy. Um, go to some of the makers at the very Renaissance Fair that make garb. Go there, pick out your garb. It's not cheap, but you know you can do Amazon if you want to. Um, it's you know, but those I've noticed people that buy those, it, they kind of last that, that gear because it's cheaply made, lasts for like a season. So if you've got the money, try Etsy try the the very people at the renaissance fair if not go ahead and do amazon get you through a season so you can kind of get your feet wet um so make sure you have those things be ready to be on your feet all day long for two days or three days straight you know 12 to 16 hours you're going to be on your feet there's not going to be a lot of sitting um so you know that's kind of it in a nutshell and and as far as pay goes it depends on the minimum wage of the state so most, most fairs will give you $150 a day. Some fair, I mean, I'm sorry, most vendors will give you like $150 a day. Some will give you 125 plus sales bonuses, okay? And that works out pretty well too. And then you, you've got some that'll give you, you know, 150 plus sales bonuses plus tips. That depends on each individual vendor. Look around, I personally, if I was gonna work a fair, I wouldn't work it for less than $150 with some kind of incentive. You know, So it's worth your time, because remember, if you're camping out there at the fair, you're gonna need food, you're gonna need supplies, and you're gonna need, you know, you know, if you don't, if you have a car, you're gonna need to drive out and go get those things. You're gonna need to do that stuff. Um, so, or if you're staying in a hotel, you're gonna make sure, you know, a night or two that you're gonna to need to pay for those things. So I would look for someone that's willing to pay and most do $150 plus some kind of incentive, that being tips or that being um, sales. If you hit a certain sales goal, you get a percentage of the sales that you sold. So that's kind of what you can expect. That's, that's really it, guys. I mean, that's really all I can tell you. Just be aware of the camping situation. Always check with the fair. What is the camping? That goes for vendors and workers. What is the camping? And they'll tell you, um, and they'll send you the information, whatever. So, because camping is probably the most, you know, tricky part of it all. Um, for TRF, there's a hotel that I stay at that's right down the road. It's clean. It's not the prettiest hotel, but it's really cheap, and it's worth me staying there. I get to wake up with a TV and I get to take a shower and all that stuff and I don't have to walk to the showers or I don't have to stand outside of a tent and bathe myself, whatever the case may be. Um, orig original Renaissance Pleasure Fair in California is a complete disaster. I mean, if you ask me, it's the worst fair that I've ever done. That one, um, you can only camp two days, that's Saturday and Sunday, and then there is no on-site camping, none, none whatsoever. The parking is also horrendous. So you have to look at RV parks or hotels near you. That's it. And you're in the middle, you know, kind of in the middle of LA. So good luck. You know, it's, and it's not cheap. So, you know, think about that too as a worker. I would recommend if you're gonna work fairs like that, that offer only that, or you can't camp, or you are, you know, stuck, you know, for somewhere to go, find a friend. Um, see if you can rent a room 
for a reasonable rate or maybe some of the fairgoers in their RV will let you for a couple hundred dollars a month, you know, stay in their RV with them. So, you know, check those things out, get that information first, get that. And what's, what, what's, what sucks is you do not get that information right up front, vendor wise anyway, until you get accepted. So, you know, that's when you start to get that information. So it, it's hard. So, you know, that's pretty much it. That's what to expect. I had a lot of questions on this. So that that's what I wanted to tell you guys. So, you know, I hope that gives you a better idea. There's other things that you need to look out for. That's just kind of stuff you learn as you go. Um, you know, but, you know, vendors, get out there, check out your spot, find where your electrical boxes are at, um, learn the camping situation get your tent or booth all set up, get your signage, get everything in line, and uh, make sure your products are sold in the way that the fair wants you to sell them. And uh, for workers, make sure you know, you're getting paid right. I would recommend $150 per day um, and with a sales incentive you know, of some kind. So that way, you, know, you should make walking out of a fair a day, minimum $250, $300 a day, um, if you're with the right booth owners, that's what you should expect to make. So anyway, I hope that helps some of you guys' questions out there. I should have did this video a long time ago, so I hope this is helpful to you. Anyway, if it is, please like and subscribe. I've got more fair videos coming, more travel videos coming, places to go, people to see, all kinds of good stuff. So please like and subscribe. Comment if you can. I always comment back 100% of the time. Don't forget to tickle that bell. That lets you know all future notifications from me coming up. So whenever I post something new, you'll be alerted right away. So thank you guys so much. Again, thank you guys out at the fair. Thank you guys for these questions. Um, thank you for buying my product. Thank you guys for getting me over 100 subscribers. I'm on my way to 1,000. So please keep it coming. I'll do my best to keep making informative, cool vids to watch. You know, sometimes they're boring, sometimes they're not. So anyway, I hope this helps you guys out out there and answers some of your questions. So. Anyway, feel free. If you got more questions, just ask me in the comment section. I'm more than happy to answer those questions. So, all right. So, be well, do well out there. And until next time, Sir Blasphemy, out.